We have a bulletin just received. Color Concept 2 – Atmospheric Perspective We'll get to our color concept in a little bit, but first I want to talk about making it good. With each assignment you have two obligations in order to successfully complete the project. The first obligation is to demonstrate successful understanding and use of a specific color concept. The second obligation is the broader foundational concept of making it good. What makes something work visually? How can we build purposefulness into our work so that it is complete and successful? This is a question that's answered in many instances in many different ways in all of your first year classes. Composition and the Visual Language now that we've gotten a lot of the digital color basics over with in the first two weeks, I'd like to talk more about the visual language as it applies to digital work. This ties directly to the objectives behind our second assignment. The rules of the visual language are not like restrictions, they are principles, they are building blocks, they are words to tell your visual story. Understanding and using the principles of the visual language allows you to communicate and maybe evoke an emotional response from the viewer. Composition. In a composition, it can be useful to think of elements in terms of their primary arrangement of shapes. Imagine that these shapes have weight. Creating a balance of visual weight is one way to create purpose and structure in a composition. If something is over here, you can balance it out by placing something here. Picture your composition balanced on a triangle. If something is visually heavy on one side or the other, your picture will tip over. If you create a balance of visual weight, the composition doesn't tip over. Sometimes you'll create this balance in really simple ways, and sometimes in really unexpected and dramatic ways. Focal point. Horizontal lines create stability. Diagonal lines create visual movement. They can be used to draw your attention to an important part of the composition, or focal point. When I talk about composition, this Van Gogh piece is one of my favorite examples. The mother's body is a nice framing element that helps direct attention to the child, and the child's body is literally a big arrow directing your attention to the child's face, which is the focal point of the composition. So, with our second project, which we will get to soon, Please take care not only to demonstrate successful execution of the color concept, but really focus on creating a complete, successful work of art. Create a composition with a good balance of visual weight. Arrange elements in a way that moves your eye through the piece. If there's a natural focal point to the composition, and there probably is, then make sure that your eye is drawn to that area. If it doesn't work, change it. With digital technology, you can turn anything into just about anything else. Take advantage of this, especially if something is critical to the composition. Make sure that you place dark things against light things and that the colors of objects that are near each other have enough contrast to be clear. Work with a limited color palette and stick to the colors in your palette. If you're making a collage involving photos, someone's shirt should be blue because it works with your color themes, not because it happened to be blue in the photo that you found. If it doesn't work, change it. Be awake and don't just accept things as you found them. Everything that you do in your piece is a visual idea. Use visual ideas not as random occurrences, but as visual themes that reoccur throughout your composition with variation. Line quality, smooth and lyrical or scratchy and agitated. Geometric shapes or organic. Muted colors or bright and colorful. Color is one of the most powerful and expressive tools in the visual language. Use it to help build a purposeful and appropriate structure for your work. Space. 
not that kind of space. There are several ways to indicate space or depth in a two-dimensional work, based on the real world. The first thing to understand is that these visual clues that we use to understand space in a two-dimensional work are the same clues that we use to understand space in the physical world. Is the saber-toothed tiger close to us or is it far away? Visual judgment of space has been crucial to our survival. It still is. Every time you get in a car, you depend on the accurate perception and navigation of visual space in order to stay on the road. When you approach a curve, it's coming up way too fast to try to calculate mathematically how much you need to turn the wheel. You need to perceive the visual relationship between your car and the road and constantly move the wheel a bit to compensate and make sure you stay on the road and navigate those visual relationships successfully. The fact that you don't crash your car every time you get behind the wheel, and yes, I am making an assumption here, that fact demonstrates the power and consistency of the visual language. Powerful because we can use visual thinking to do things on a daily basis that would be impossible otherwise. Consistent because we can use it every day with the same predictable results. And since the beginning, artists have used these ideas about space to enrich and clarify their compositions. A sense of space. Let's talk about some of the ways that artists can convey a sense of space in their work. What do we see here? If you answered two brochures on a table, I would agree with you. If I asked you which one was in front, you'd probably answer the one on the right. I know I would, and that brings us to two important concepts. Overlap. One is overlap. If one thing is in front of the other, covering up part of it, then we know that the thing that's in front is closer to us in space. Simple. Continuation. The other concept is continuation. If we see these two magazines like this, we assume that one is in front of the other and that the magazine in the back is intact, and the part that we can't see is still there even though we can't see it. The idea of continuation is why we can position elements in a way that moves your eye through a composition even though there's space between the elements. So overlap is the first and simplest way we perceive depth in a composition. Size. The second way we perceive depth in a composition is size. Little saber-toothed tiger, far away. Big saber-toothed tiger, run! And this leads us to the idea of linear perspective. You'll cover linear perspective in design class if you haven't already, so it's outside of the purview of this class. But you will need to know and notice that things that are not facing you directly on the picture plane recede in space and that they do so in a consistent way. You may need to use this idea in your second assignment and I'll give you some tools to do so in our technical instruction. Atmospheric perspective. Now we're ready to discuss atmospheric perspective, using color to indicate or create a sense of depth in a composition. As things recede in space, their color becomes less saturated, less intense. Objects lose contrast, they lose their darkest darks, and they lose their lightest lights. Things also become blurrier, less sharply focused as they recede in space. The further back an object is in space, the more pronounced these effects become. It's not simply about creating a realistic sense of depth in your work. Artists and designers of all kinds use the ideas of atmospheric perspective to control a composition. It can be used to clarify a busy composition. It can direct your attention to a focal point in your work. The artist perhaps most associated with the concept of atmospheric perspective is painter Thomas Cole, who's generally acknowledged to be the founder of the Hudson River School. Thomas Cole was all about creating a sense of depth using value and color. I'm going to show you several images by this artist. 
In this work, you can clearly see four distinct levels of depth. The highest contrast and level of clarity is on the rocks on the left. The greenish outcrop on the right is slightly less contrasty and more softly focused. The mountains in the distance display extreme effects related to atmospheric perspective. Of these two mountains, the one on the front is slightly clearer and more saturated. Here's another related scene also by Thomas Cole. Again, all about creating a sense of depth using atmospheric perspective. Again, several levels of depth, but mostly about the contrast between close and far away. A carefully controlled color palette, mostly analogous colors, gives unity and consistency to the design. Look at the tree on the right compared to the mountain behind it, using atmospheric perspective to clarify the composition. Look at the mountain on the right versus the two little mountains in the middle. Clear levels of depth. 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 And look how the clear, high contrast rocks in the foreground frame the composition and draw you into it. Look how clear and focused this composition is because of the contrast between the goblet and the mountains behind it. Here's one with architecture using the same principles of atmospheric perspective. Notice, compositionally, that Cole has placed the largest amount of color in the objects that are closest to us on the bottom right. The artist has used his compositional choices to enhance the sense of depth. Even in realistic works, artists often exaggerate the effects of atmospheric perspective. In this work by Diego Velasquez, the figures that are farthest away are placed in front of a wall, conveniently cutting them off from the light source so they can become drastically less contrasty and saturated in color as compared to the figures in the foreground. In this work by Murillo, look at the super exaggerated differences in contrast, focus, and color saturation among the cherubim, the little figures. They are pretty close to each other in space, so this wouldn't look like this if it were actually happening. The artist has exaggerated the effects of atmospheric perspective to clarify a busy composition and help you focus on the central figure. Again, exaggerating the effects of atmospheric perspective among people standing fairly close to each other to clarify and focus the composition. This one you might know. In Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, look at the amount of sharpness and contrast in the figure. Look at the lack of contrast and muted colors in the background, allowing you to fully focus on the figure. Also, big giant triangle as a composition, drawing attention to the face and the famous enigmatic smile. Careful Assessment As things go backwards in space, they become grayer and blurrier. That sounds pretty simple, right? The trick, the more challenging aspect of atmospheric perspective is putting together a complex work involving many elements and multiple levels of depth. You have to use careful judgment in adjusting color and value. If something is on a particular level of depth in your composition, it needs to match the color saturation and degree of contrast and focus found in other elements that are on a similar level of depth. You need to match the overall color temperature among images, warm or cool, orangish or bluish. You need to match your light source, the direction the light is coming from, and the direction and the length of shadows that are cast by objects. And of course, you need to have careful masking around objects that you place in your composition. Assignment two, atmospheric perspective. This assignment uses only Photoshop and it uses only photographic images. No drawing. Set up a new Photoshop document, 360 DPI, Adobe RGB, about 10 inches by 14 inches. It can be horizontal or vertical, whichever is best for your composition. If you need help creating the document, rewatch the video from the first assignment about setting up your document. Use Photoshop to create an original composition that utilizes atmospheric perspective. Take and use several individual photos as the basis for this project. Take photos of people and separate photos of places. Use a good camera. You may use other photos you took as well. If you use found images, they should be modified significantly and incorporated into an original and unique 
composition. Don't just take someone else's photo and stick some stuff in it. Levels of depth. Create several distinct levels of depth in your piece. Arrange your elements into an effective composition. Think of your elements as shapes and arrange them so that they move your eye to an intended focal point. Use atmospheric perspective, variation in color saturation, value, contrast, and focus to further clarify your design and emphasize your focal point. This does not necessarily have to be a realistic world that you are creating, but it has to be stylistically consistent. And it has to use the ideas of atmospheric perspective in consistent and appropriate ways. It can be weird, surreal subject matter, or you can create a composition portraying an everyday occurrence. Any subject matter is okay. It should be elaborate enough to represent two weeks worth of work. A summary. Good composition, at least four levels of depth, use atmospheric perspective to help clarify the composition, emphasize the focal point of your composition. You have two weeks to complete the project. No printing. You do not need to print this assignment. Just send me the multi-layered PSD file with your name on it, on the due date or before. Helpful hints. A few helpful hints. Hint number one. Composition is important. Make a thumbnail sketch so you know in advance how your composition will work and how all of the elements fit together. You may modify the composition as you progress, but it's important that you have a good plan to start with. Hint number two. Make a photo shoot. You don't have to do this, but it's what I would do if I were doing this assignment. Have friends pose for you and take clear, high-resolution pictures using consistent lighting. If you do this, you're working with all original, high-quality images with a consistent light source, and they all work perfectly with your composition. Shooting your own photos will make the rest of your job much easier, although you'll still have to alter the images and use careful judgment in order to create several levels of depth using atmospheric perspective. Hint number three. Don't take low-resolution images from the web and try to blow them up and use them as the main images in your work. They'll never be clear enough. Start with clear, high-resolution images for the foreground images. Hint number four. You could have many more levels, of course, but you'll probably need at least four levels of depth to create a sense of space using atmospheric perspective. Student Solutions Before we get to the technical instruction associated with this project, let's look at some successful examples of student solutions for this project. Some of these works are highly stylized and some of them look like believable environments, but all of them are composited from multiple images, altered and manipulated to create the illusion of depth.
This completes our lecture on atmospheric perspective. Time to go to the next video and start our technical instruction.